if I had known that in my 20s, I'd have been a multimillionaire right now. Things that I wish I knew when I was younger. Unless you're dead, you could always bounce back. Don't put off what you want to do for tomorrow. Get it done today with all the influences between Aunt Tate's, Megan Thee Stallions, and it's all about having your own shit, having your shit together, and then finding the right person for you. And it would have been mine if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. <laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of the Full Gambit Podcast. And like we, I've been saying over the last, what, three episodes, I think we've done about three episodes now. We're in a brand new studio, another new setup, and I'm solo today. If you think that you want my reaction to something that's happening, in the comment section below, make sure to send us a link and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, these podcasts are pre-recorded so it may take like a week or so please be patient don't worry about it let's be patient and as we get to it we will now i had a question about things that i wish i knew when i was um younger about relationships about people in general and the things that i did to become successful right and the thing about it is, is the truth of the situation. I'm still on my success journey. I don't feel that you could deem a person truly successful until the, until they're dot, dot dead, right? Dead and gone. And then society kind of looks at their accomplishment and accolades and determines how successful that person is. I think you could live lavishly, enjoy whatever wealth that you generate, and you could like pat yourself on the back. But overall, you can't be like over these little triumphs, you can't be, oh, I am a success. I'm a success story. I can give advice. No, I think, I think you can give advice here and there. And I, I guess it's relevant, but I don't think I am 100% there. I think I'm better off where, than where I started from. And I started from rock fucking bottom, like absolute rock bottom. And if you know my story, you know. Um, so let me give you a bit of a background of things that I learned. I learned that everybody that calls your name or laughs in your face isn't your friend, doesn't have your best interest at heart, and you should audit your circle all the time. I learned early on that there are very, very few people that do have your interest at heart that would go against their own I as circles and, and family for you and you should cherish and respect those people and kind of nurture and always look out. Um, loyalty is everything. Um, I think that's a very underrated and, and overly abused trait. Um, it's not about who it's not about what, you know, necessarily it's about who, you know, so connections are everything. I think your net work is your net worth. Um, and I've said that several times. I think if you hang around millionaires long enough, you're going to catch a couple hundred thousand, if not a million dollar contract or elevate your thinking to that mindset. Um, and you're going to start attracting that wealth. I think we, we don't pay attention to frequencies as much as we should. Um, and, and I think that's why a lot of people stay in the situations that they stay in because they are surrounded by bums, people that think poorly, people that don't have a growth mindset, people that are negative and it plays out in their lives. They're wondering why they can't catch a break. They're wondering why no one support them because you're hanging out with people that won't support you. You're not putting yourself out there. You're not putting yourself in more positive spaces to get like real legitimate feedback on your ideas and, and, and stuff. I think um, more emphasis needs to be put on. I wish I knew how to invest earlier. I wish I knew about crypto a lot earlier. I wish I knew about compounding interest. I wish I knew um, that all pussy and good pussy. Uh, I wish I knew that. I, I spent too much 
uh, money and time um, chasing and curating and um, just trying to get pussy. And it, it was just a waste. Um, I enjoyed myself. I did. But it it's not tangible. Like, I, it did nothing, like, outside of a good story to tell as a joke here and there, or, or I had this threesome or whatever. It, it, it did nothing overall for my life. So there's a lot of wasted time there. Um, I wish I knew. I wish I knew how hard and lonely entrepreneurship was. And I could, I think I could have fortified my mind earlier in life. I wasted a lot of time in college. I was pretty smart in high school, but I wasted a lot of time in college and I didn't have the right circle around me during that time. And I took a lot of things for granted. And then when my rough point came, it was hard to kind of get through, but I did get through it. And I think everybody needs a rough spot. I think everybody needs a little bit of grit. I think everybody needs some mud under their fingertips. You have to go through it in order to appreciate when you get to it. Um, I think that's that's real. I grew up hard. I grew up um, in a single parent home that gave me a lot of context. I learned how to hustle. Um, I learned how to survive on very little. So now these things that are affecting so many people around the world, it really don't bother me because I've been through worse, right? Like I could always say, hey, but it could be worse and I actually know what that means. And it gives me a great temperament for when I um, a gauge for when I take risk that I could be like, oh, I could lose this amount or I could lose this, but, you know, I could be okay. And I was able to learn early on that unless you're dead, you could always bounce back. Like you, you have to be completely out of the game called life to be done. And I think a lot of people don't take advantage of it. A lot of people take it for granted. Um, A lot of people put off, don't put off what you want to do for tomorrow. Get it done today. Be, be more of a doer. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I don't procrastinate because I do. I'm a creative, right? But I got a, I get a lot of shit done. I get like get a lot of shit done. So you have to have a doer's mindset. You have to know your limits. You have to know your strengths. You have to learn how to delegate and not be afraid to spend money to make money. I think that was the hardest lesson that I had to learn because your mindset is you want a hundred percent of everything, right? And you you're willing to do a hundred percent of the work. And in some cases you can't at a high level, but it's fucking draining. You don't leave yourself a lot of time to think about the next big idea or to just usa come down treat your body right, and then kind of go back at it. So in my older age, I've learned that if I find professionals that can get the job done and help me to create something epic, I still get the fucking credit. It's still my work. And the value goes up tremendously because case in point, um, the other day I did, I shot my second short. Right. I direct that shot it. I didn't shoot it because Tony was a DB. Sorry, Tony. I was trying to take the credit. See what I did there It's my fucking short. I commissioned the script. I did the casting. I directed it. It's, it's going to be my name. But Tony Williams, Tony with the Sony did the work. He was the DP. He helped put the shot list together and we did a great job. I, I even feel like I should give him a co-director credit. But if that was me seven, eight years ago, I'd want to do the entire thing myself. And I would want to show it myself, edit it myself and have all that pain and then come up with something I would call today mediocre. But now I am trusting a team more. 
I am delegating, I'm outsourcing, and the level of work has gone up tremendously. Even look at this podcast. You can give me some water, please. Even if you look at this podcast and where it came from and where it is today, that's trusting, that's investing. And and I invested in it. I, I paid for the studio um, time where I was at. And, you know, we just threw a light up and press record. I had all my cameras there and then I would send it over to get an edit. And then I looked back at it and I was like, this could be a lot better. And it was time to pivot. This was when I was on vacation. And a very, I had a very interesting uh, slide in my DM conversation. Hey, you want to come down here? Da, 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 da. Really? For sure? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I had always had it in my mind that I wanted to be a part of this particular space here at Frame Studios. And I was like, okay, it's time. So again, you come in, try it out. You invest in the quality of it because it's an investment. It's not... It's not like a free rodeo situation. You have to spend money to make money. And it's been night and day. The responses that I've gotten since I've moved over, just moving studios and having someone that understands what the potential of what I was trying to do, what it is, and put in that time, effort, idea to get it right, lighting, sound, overall polished look has been night and day and it's taking it from here to here but guess who gets the credit me i mean it is what it is but it's true so if you have the ability to create something take the time to find qualified people and spend that money. It will be worth every penny. I think I wish I knew that earlier. I would have been a lot further ahead. What else I wish I knew? Relationship wise. Nothing lasts forever. Not to jump on the Mia Khalifa situation. But I think... Um, Taking your time to get to know yourself first, then go and then date and shouldn't date broke. That was a horrible experience. Don't think you have the office dick. And for some of you, don't think you have the office pussy. Not a good thing. You should have your shit together. And honestly, with the way things are going, with all the influences between the Andrew Tates, um, the... Megan the Stallions and whoever, whatever side of the spectrum. It's all about having your own shit, having your shit together and then finding the right person for you. I think I kind of did it backwards. I was just consumed with the fleshy aspect of it. And no, I wasn't putting enough effort into building up myself first to attract the best possible. I still married great. Right. I still married great. I have great wife, great family. Um, yeah, my wife is annoying sometimes. Of course. Who can't be fucking annoying? Right. I have two beautiful daughters. Um, I'm blessed. But I think had I put that value in myself first, I think my overall family life, not saying that I would probably end up with her, but I probably end up with her, that person with that mentality a lot quicker because I wasted so much time doing bullshit. And no one's going to tell you that they wasted time doing bullshit, but I can because at the end of the day, it's my experience. I, just, just stop. Stop, pause, reflect, audit, try to make yourself better. And you can do it in so many different ways. You could do it in the way you dress. You could go to the gym. You could read books to improve your mentality. You could take a certification to improve your skill set. Um, you could take that chance to start that business. You could take that chance to develop. If you Okay, so there's the entrepreneurial lifestyle, and then there's the career, I work for somebody lifestyle. What people tend to do 
they tend to go into the career aspect and they tend to just grind and grind and grind and grind and hope that their work speaks for itself and then they get raises. No, you have to agitate for yourself. You have to put yourself in the best position to win. Um, Kyle Walking, great friend of mine, he taught me this. What Kyle would do is, okay, hey, I'm going to go to XYZ. I'm going to have an interview, have a conversation, and you're going to put a number on me. Then I'm going to go back to my people. Hey, man, I think I'm going to push out because this one offering me this. Oh, no, no, no. You're, you're a quality guy. And he was very well, for like very respected. Hey, I could, I could double that or I could put this on it. Really? Just having that honest conversation after you see my value? Okay, cool. Yeah, I can. I can come because, you know, they, they match and went over. Okay, cool. A couple months later, same game. Because if you don't play that game, you know what you're going to do. You're going to sit there. You're going to get frustrated. Inflation is going to rise. Your pay isn't going to go up. And you're going to be like, why don't they see my value? Because you're just coming in. You're just taking. Yes, master. Thank you, mom. Go in. The same could be said on the entrepreneurial side. You're not taking the time to improve yourself or you have and your prices stay the same. You have to evaluate yourself every few cycles. You have to understand what's going on around you. What are your peers doing? Not to say liking mine and copying everything someone else is doing, but understanding what you, where your market is at. Are you priced in the sweet spot? Are you priced out of your market? Are you priced below? Are you way below market value? And if you're priced way below market value, you're fucking miserable. Because you're getting, quote unquote, a lot of work, but you're burnt out. You barely could deliver what you have. It just doesn't make sense. It, does, it doesn't make any sense. So, and I used to get upset. Oh, God. I used to get upset um, because I was uh, too, at the time when the market was a bit low, it was like 175, 200, like, if you were top of the top, you could get like 275 an hour. And I was at that 175. I was always like, I was always like mid. I always like to keep it mid. And I saw a flyer for this guy. I can't even remember what the photographer name. I don't think he does it anymore anyway. 50 fucking dollars. I did to do what? What are you doing? And then I worked with another guy while I was at Tribune and he was like, man, I need to have this special. So I'm going to charge $500, eight hours and an album just to get all that lump sum in. And by the time as them people was done with him, cause he couldn't deliver. He took all that money on the top front and he couldn't deliver. And it was like, ah, oh, no. So, what I decided to do, and this could be game for some of you, I stuck with Destination Wedding. All right, this is my second tour with Destination. Back in the early 2000s, 2010s, that was my bread and butter. Shut down, went off in another, learned some stuff. Life got in the way, came back. Hey, Wedding Wire, here is, give me the spotlight. Push my ad and my storefront out there. And every couple of weeks, send me some leads. And I'll turn those leads into clients. And I'll only do destination weddings. They come. I take some pictures. The camera algorithm is built for white people anyway. Flawless. They don't try and talk you down. Money in hand. 50% down. 50% when they come. It's done. No long talk. Price right here. Now, every time I buy a glass, a new body, then my expensive memory cards, I look at my inventory, and my camera inventory right now is worth maybe, what, $40,000, $45,000. I'm like, oh, price need to go up. And I look at the market. This is what my pair is doing. This is what 
my competition is doing. This is what my competition abroad is doing. And I price accordingly. So when they come, it is what it is. And you have to do that. You do that whether you want to do it every quarter, every half year, every year, every two years. It doesn't matter, but you have to do it. Um, I wish I paid more attention in accounts class because I did business. I mean, I, could, I know what a profit and loss is. I know what a balance sheet is. <sighs> I wish I like paid more attention because staying on top of your numbers is a big part of business. Because if you don't, you're paying someone big money to do it for you when you could have done it yourself. But like I said earlier, sometimes you have to spend money to make money. So now that I'm at this point in my life, I don't give a fuck about it. Hey, you can do this for me in a timely manner. Go right ahead. Vetting people is important too. If someone seems like a bullshitter, they probably are. Stay away from them. And you get what you pay for. If you know something is valued at, say, two, three thousand bucks, and you take the contract at a thousand dollars, you're looking for that headache. People, there are hustlers out there that will hustle you, that will take advantage. Fiverr is a real thing. You could find some quality contract work on Fiverr, and it'll make you look brilliant. I did some real work. Um, just to, you know, showcase my weddings and stuff. 50 bucks. Some of the best work I've ever seen. It's a real thing. And sometimes you can negotiate. I remember there was this guy, I think he did uh, 3D modeling for me. And he did it for like 300 bucks. And a couple of months later, I was trying to find him. He wasn't there anymore. And I need to do a 3D rendering for the new school that we're remodeling now. And the guy looked at me and he was like, $800. And I was like, not a fucking day like it. Now, if you want to knock that down, he's like, oh, no, no, no. Too low. I cannot do that. I was like, okay, cool. That's fine. Next. Okay. Two days later, guess who was back in my DM? Because you think you can hustle me. I know the value. I know the work that I could get for this price because I did the research. Reading is a thing. Researching is a thing. Knowing the true value of things, that's a thing. I wish I knew that earlier. And I'm talking a lot of business stuff because I think the relationships, relationship stuff is out there. Family ain't always your friends. That I wish like I knew earlier. Everybody... <sighs> Friends are like, I think friends are in, in a way more important than family, um, especially the extended family, because friends are the family you choose. So they line up exactly with your personality traits, what you need at that particular time. And it's, I think that loyalty is kind of tested more and it's forged with either trauma or triumph, those two T's. Um, and I think they're a little bit of a bond there. Like the extended family, like I don't even talk to the majority of my cousins. I mean, do I feel bad about it? Not really. Do I love them? Sure. You came from my aunts and I love my aunts, but y'all on some dumb shit. Like, I mean, like real. And that's my mom's side of the family. I don't give a fuck what my dad's side of the family. Like, I like my, my little brother. I like two, maybe three of my cousins. But the rest of y'all could go piss off. And when you get to that point of life, people think that you're a bad person. And I wish I knew that being bad or good is a spectrum because not everything is always black and white. There's a lot of gray in the world. There's a lot of gray. A lot of us live in the gray. And it's, it's based on perception, what you see. And a lot of people think that their perception dictates reality. And it doesn't. I think that's a, I think that's a, 
we imprison ourselves when we think like that. I think we have to learn to look at a person's situation and circumstances and kind of put ourselves in that those shoes so we understand maybe why they made the decision they made. And sometimes we just still can't get down with that decision. But at least we show a little bit of empathy and care, try to figure it out before we say, fuck it. Ooh, you know what's a good one? I wish I knew the power of no. You have to learn to use it. You have to learn to say it. It should be a part of everybody's vocabulary. You can't be a yes man, and you can't have yes men all around you. That's a recipe for disaster. My wife hates when I say no. It's one of my favorite words. She was like, oh, can you do this? Nope. Why? Because I fucking said so. And that should be enough. And learn to stand behind what you say. A lot of people can't. Regardless, I, um, I was fired from the Tribune because of I sit on my principles. So you have to learn how to stand on your word, no matter what the consequences is. And I remember and it came back to me that this one girl that I wasn't getting on with, like we hated each other's guts. I don't even know why, because I, I was like nice to her and we came from the same school and background, but she didn't like me. And for a while, I didn't give a fuck but her. She um, said that I should have taken it on the chin um, and kind of took the advice of Brother Hutch that manners take you throughout the world. And I should have kind of bowed my head and be a little bit more humble. And I was like, I guess you don't know who the fuck I am. Like, I was the kid that reset after a fucking rock bottom. And this would not end me. I didn't need, in my mind, my mindset, I didn't need the Tribune. The Tribune needed me. And I took that. I took my ball. I went home. That same year, I was in a national exhibit. My photography work over the last year was in the national exhibit at the National Art Gallery. I took a few contracts to do some big uh, things video-wise, and I launched JKL Media. And then Happy Foods was a thing. So, and now look at it. Back now, now that my friends who are in a position of power could give me small contract work, I just was the headline photographer as a freelancer for the MP arraignment for rape and assault. That look of shame on Cornish face, that was me. And they have a photographer, but they just don't know the game. So sometimes regardless of the consequence, you have to be able to stand on your word. As long as you're not dead, it doesn't kill you, like literally kills you, you could always bounce back. You could always come back. And if I had known that in my 20s, i had been a multimillionaire right now. Yeah. I think I think it's easy to always kind of look back in retrospect. Um hindsight is obviously 2020. But what's the point of looking back if you're not applying it now to the now? You have to evolve. You have to The world changes every single day. And in some cases, every second, people's net worth go up and down. People fall out of grace. People die. It changes. The ripples are always going, always going. So why are you so hell bent on staying the same, staying stuck? And in a lot of cases, being mediocre. There's a saying that people say, um, only God could judge you. And I think that's a lie. You should judge yourself. You should judge yourself. You should lay it out 
and say that, hey, you know what? Not just the base yourself. Like, don't just come down on yourself or come down on yourself. Say, like, it needs to have a purpose. It needs to be constructive. You need to build off of it. Don't say that you're just a worthless piece of shit just because you want to say it and it makes you, you know, you get a kick out of it. Like, you know, people have these word kinks. Like, no. Figure out what you did wrong. Figure out what the effects are. See if you could fix it. And if you can't fix it with the external relationships, because, you know, actions have consequences and usually there's collateral damage with people and relationships. You go back, you see if you can fix it. If you can't, you have to live with it, carry it, learn from it, and move the fuck on. There was something that I saw, um, and I wish I knew this as well, um, not to take people's abuse because people tend to lash out hurt people do hurt people like that's that's a real thing um and not to take lowness i saw this uh clip with this girl um and i and this is why i hate these uh street social media influences i like hate them they randomly go up to couples and people and ask like the stupidest most divisive questions and this couple this guy probably early 20s, she asks them what it would take for you to cheat. And the guy was like, nothing, he wouldn't cheat. And the girl was like, a lot. And that was already like, boom, red flag, a lot, fuck. Okay, we've, we've had these hypothetical situations. And, and usually when someone says a lot, it's this astronomical, like, unrealistic figure that only like a sheik from fucking Dubai can like throw on you like a billion dollars and you know we could be okay you could cry about us me cheating in a Bugatti or something this bitch when the girl followed up and this is a female followed up to ask how much this motherfucker said 10 grand this low hillbilly ugly fucking buck teeth motherfucker Looked at this man face after he said that he wouldn't cheat. You doubled down that you would cheat on this young man for 10 grand. And the influencer was like, well, she could buy you a lot of things. And he stood right there, totally embarrassed. Looked like he wanted to cry. And still, with all his teeth in his mouth and his tongue, Call that ugly bitch a queen and how much he loved her after she just admitted that any nigga worth his salt that have his shit together could come and take your bitch for 10 grand. Don't take people lotus. Wish I learned that early. But guess what? You can learn it now. The world is burning. It is burning all around us and the only thing that you could do is have some principles stand by those principles have your standards not the abs work only for me type of standards realistic ones holistic ones based in reality and and proper society not kissing your brother on the lips not um, being, uh, not celebrating and trying to compare yourself to an actual goat, saying that you are the queen or king of marriage after you failed. We need to have some standards. We need to go back to common sense. That's the only thing that's, that can cure this. So read, watch, intently judge. Audit yourself. Evolve. Thank you for listening.